Your eardrum is amazing, and that's why you have to look after it. So you should never, ever stick anything in your ear that's smaller than your elbow. What's that? It's harder than you made it sound. Can I borrow your elbow? <laughs> that's better. This is Operation Takeover. Can you guess who today's hero is? Well, I'll give you a clue. You might have to food them if you've over... You're a bit hard to understand. That was a rubbish clue, Chris. We're about to take over the job of today's hero, dental surgeon Anitha. Anitha is a top trainer at the King's College London Dental Institute. Now, how important is it to look after your teeth? It is incredibly important to look after your teeth. Brushing morning and night for two minutes and to try and not eat too many sugary things, fizzy drinks especially. So how often should you see the dentist? You should really see the dentist every six months. Uh, uh, um. What? Anita, Dr. Sun is very proud of his teeth and he would like to show them off to you. Would you mind having a look at them? Absolutely, that's no problem. He's such a show-off. Here we go, Zand. Open wide. Oh, right, eight, seven, six. If you've ever wondered what on earth your dentist is talking about when you're in the chair, here's how it works. Each tooth is given a specific number according to where it is in the mouth. Any milk teeth that you still have will be given a letter. And what kind of common problems are you looking for? I'm looking to make sure that you're brushing properly and that there isn't any decay in your teeth. Zan's done very well and he doesn't have any. Very impressive, Zan. Before we let loose on today's takeover challenge, we need a masterclass. But I've no idea who we're going to practice on. We use something very special. We use a phantom head. A phantom head? Ah! Oh, come on, Zand. Really? The phantom, ah! or model head, is used by students to practice doing fillings. You start by putting in a suction tube to remove any extra saliva so the patient doesn't choke. Next, you use the drill. Cool. Attaching the drill bit with a steady hand. There you go. Fix in. Then we're going to imagine that this tooth has a little bit of decay in it. And so we're going to cut a little teeny tiny hole. In goes the filling. We're going to use a white filling material called composite. Which is set hard using an ultraviolet light. Wow. So we cover it so that it doesn't hurt our eyes. And then if you touch it, it's gone completely hard. Amazing. Thanks, Anita. We've seen just how important dentists are for keeping your oral health in tip-top condition. But will we be able to brush up on our skills enough to make our careers as dentists sparkle? Come on. It's time for us to take over as dentists. Your challenge is to perform a filling on the phantom head. The first part is to remove the decay and the second part is to put the filling in. I'll be judging you on your professionalism, your technique, and how well you make it look like a real tooth at the end. You know what, Chris? I've really got this challenge. Anitha thinks my teeth look great, and now that I've overcome my fear of the phantom heads, there's really nothing to worry about. Oh, you've overcome your fear, have you? Well, well this won't bother you at all. <laughs> Come on, Chris. It's time to get our teeth into this. No problem. First of all, we get out the drill. Put that right in. OK. That's very good. Hello, sir or madam. Drill. Ooh. <laughs> that was <laughs> Whoa! Drill. OK. <laughs> Health and safety, on. Before you take your eye out and press oh, the back, it goes in and it locks it. <laughs> so, first big mistake. So we've got to lock the drill bit into the handpiece. It can fly out and then that could hurt somebody. It's a bit nerve-wracking because it looks so much like a real tooth. I kind of don't want to drill into it. I'm drilling already. What about the suction, Smarty Pants? So he's forgotten to turn his suction on. That's embarrassing. So if it was a real patient, they'd be gurgling. Um, I'd focus on yourself rather than me, Zand. Oh, he's got his hands in the patient's eyes. We don't do that usually. Come on, slow coach. I've moved on to filling. Right behind you. I've had to use quite a lot, and I think I may have drilled out a little too much too. Oh, Zand. I mean, it's very clear now why people have to train for years and years how to do this. Just need to set it with the UV light. Probably enough. And, uh, right, thanks very much, sir. Uh, or oh, madam, you can go on your way. Well, I think I'm done. A satisfied customer. You can close your mouth now. Not sure he's impressed. 
Fingers crossed Anitha is. Time for the verdict. Anitha, how did we do? Well, you both tried really hard. That's not Fine. good. That is not good. On from the professionalism, Sand, you did put your fingers in the patient's eyes. I was, I, I was a decent place to rest my hand. Technique-wise, Sand did take a bit more tooth off than we normally would. For the final product, actually, you were both not too bad. So what's the verdict? Chris. Yes. Oh! oh. I guess I wasn't expecting to lose. What, because you'd had such a good time? I'd begun to believe uh, that I'd become a dentist. Well, Zond, you may have felt like a real dentist, but you're not a real dentist. That is job most certainly best left to the professionals. Anita, I think you better have our coats back. Fabulous. Ooh! That looks nasty. What happened? Well, Mr Grumbles and I were playing in the park, and I fell over and he stamped on my wrist. What? You were playing with Chris? Without me? Yeah, we quite often do that. What's the big deal? Come back here! Well, I'm glad you hurt yourself. I'm not surprised, you know. Now, look, give me a hammer this bandage. Yeah, I've got a better idea. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, haven't you heard? Laughter's meant to be really good for people with pain. <laughs> but that is not how it works. Sounds like a case for investigation, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> laughter is something we all do. This lot are all part of a laughter club. <laughs> they get together once a week to really just do one thing and one thing only, and that is laugh their heads off. And there are scientists who believe there are significant medical benefits from this kind of laughter. Meet Robin Dunbar, a professor of evolutionary psychology. He's very serious about laughter. Robin, what have you discovered about laughter? When you laugh, the brain is flooded with endorphins. So endorphins are chemicals that make us feel good, is that right? Yes, it helps suppress pain. Can we test this? Oh, we can test that absolutely, yes, and I have just the plan. So in order to see Professor Robin's theory in action, I'm going to need a couple of things. First of all, 14 experimental guinea pigs. Oh, hello. hello. And secondly, a stand-up comedian. That's handy. We're going to try and prove that when you laugh, you can take more pain. Are you ready? Yes! Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Stage one, pain. Our guinea pigs have to sit in a chair position against the wall until their legs hurt so much they can't take the pain anymore. You can try this at home. It's not as easy as it looks. Professor Robin's going to keep track of how long they last, and it's not long before our guinea pigs start dropping like flies. You're done. That's good, Saran. These are the last two. <laughs> Oh. Stage two, laughter. Our classroom comic making our guinea pigs giggle to increase their endorphin rush. Stage three, more pain. Go! Let's see how long they last, this time after a belly full of laughter. Is the comedy doing anything different to their muscles at all? Uh, the comedy is just making them laugh, and that's triggering an endorphin response. Nothing about their leg muscles has got stronger. It's no. just they feel the pain less. Yes. So pain is in the brain. Pain is in the brain. Don't give up! <laughs> that's good, that's good. Oh, bravo, well done. Now sit back, lean back. Oh! Yes! We have a winner! You ready? Time to look at the results and see if laughter made them last longer. Ta-da! This table shows how long our guinea pigs lasted before the comedy and after. The ones in red are the longest times. So what we can see is that almost everyone except three people got better the second time. Even though you're a bit more tired, you almost all got better the second time. Why do you think that is? Um, I think that um, it distracted us. We were thinking about the laughter, so we weren't really thinking about how much it hurt. So Weida and Daisy are spot on. Our second test showed our guinea pigs didn't feel as much pain. They lasted longer due to the endorphin rush released by laughter. 
If there's one thing we've learned today is the power of jokes can really help you not feel pain. So I've got a bit of a joke for you, OK? Two television aerials meet on a roof and they fall in love and decide to get married. The ceremony wasn't great, but the reception was amazing. <laughs> what? I don't understand. It's Dr Chris's favourite joke. No, it's not, Zond. That was rubbish. <laughs> Without water, your body simply wouldn't work. And you can help your kidneys do the best job they can just by drinking plenty of water every day. If you're weeing regularly and it's light in colour, you'll know you're helping your body. Ouch. Lunchtime, one of Zahn's favourite parts of the day. Yes! Extra cheesy fries with a mango salsa on the side, please, Chris. Now, you probably know that the food you eat can affect your physical health. But did you know that it also affects your mood and your mental health? I've lined up a few volunteers to show you just how big the effect is. Meet Poppy... Lila, Jack, Molly, Samuel and Isaac. Thank you all for helping me with this experiment. I want you to follow two different diets. A good diet for two days and a bad diet for two days. For the first two days, you'll all be eating healthy stuff like green veg, oily fish, nuts and fruit. And for those two days you're on the good diet, you're going to drink nothing but clear water. And then for two days, we're going to get you to eat a bad diet including pizza, biscuits, sweets, chocolate, donuts. Which diet are you looking forward to? Oh, I must say I'm looking forward to the unhealthy diet. Definitely unhealthy diet. Unhealthy because it's an excuse to eat unhealthily. I don't blame them. Surely everyone wants a donut for breakfast. You say that, Zand, but what my volunteers don't know is that the healthier diet is more than just healthy. It's a brain food diet. Your brain needs key minerals and vitamins to produce the chemicals which keep you focused and feeling good, such as B vitamins in the veg, zinc in the nuts and omega-3 in the oily fish. The science sounds great, but what happened in reality? Hi, this is the first of two healthy days. I'm not really looking forward to it because it's going to be bad. I just had my healthy breakfast and it was very nice. Lunch, I had the mackerel better than I expected, actually. I tried the mackerel pasta. It wasn't that good. I don't really like mackerel. It tasted a bit weird, but it's been about an hour and a half since dinner and I still feel full. feel great. I felt great for it the whole day. I think the healthy food is actually doing something. I find that revision is a lot easier when I've eaten a good meal. Although not everybody loved the taste, the brain food diet has successfully kept our volunteers happy, energised and able to concentrate. But what about the unhealthy diet? Will it really make that much difference to their mental health? Well, there aren't many vitamins and minerals on this side of the table. These items are packed with saturated fat and sugars. Let's see what happens. So this is day one of the unhealthy day. I think this is the best diet ever. So I'm looking forward to this and I really like pizza. And I've just had dinner, which was fish, fish and chips, but I had sausage and chips because I prefer that. I was quite hyper. I couldn't focus on what I was doing. I feel quite irritable and I just don't feel well at all. I keep on getting headaches and I get really, really easily distracted. After that, I felt quite hungry. I'm really hungry at the moment. My skin has become greasy and I've developed spots. After my sugar high, I felt really, really tired. I'm feeling tired. Everyone loved the taste and the initial burst of energy, but then the unhealthy diet swiftly brought everyone down. They ended up tired, grumpy, hungry, and even a bit spotty. In just two days, all of our volunteers reported feeling better, not just in their bodies, but also in their minds on the healthy diet. So if you're feeling stressed, why not have a go? Chances are you'll feel better for it. 